In January 2005, at the World Economic Conference in Davos, Switzerland, Nicholas Negroponte announced the revolutionary idea of a $100 laptop. A $100 laptop that would be sold to the developing world and it would allow children from all parts of the globe to embrace and in inter interact with technologies and become technology producers, designers, and innovators for the next century. What's interesting about the laptop is that it provides an, a, a tremendously interesting way of thinking about how to distribute technology to the world. A cheap laptop was what many parts of the world needed since they could not afford um, the traditionally expensive devices that are sold in places like the United States. As a historian of technology who is deeply interested in the way technology affects society and culture, but as well as a person who is deeply invested in the consumption and use of all kinds of technology, I was one of the early purchasers of an X01 laptop. I received my laptop in December 2007 and I gleefully opened the, the box to have this beautiful green and white device that allowed me to connect in new ways and think about the way technology affects society and how technology is culture in many ways. However, after I opened the device and interacted with it and spoke with lots of folks about it, it began to raise a host of interesting questions about the place of technology in global society. And the two questions that I'd like to speak to are, can one design a technology for the de developing world? And then the second is, has the Exo laptop become a gadget for American technological consumers? Sh I struggle with the idea of the Exo laptop being a laptop for the developing world. Um, it's hard to re for me to reduce the globe into one single solitary unit that can, we can produce a technology for. And it reduces all the different cultural, ethnic, and regional differences to one simple technological solution. So in a sense, there's a technological fix for all our global, social, and cultural ills. And it reminds me of the work by Ron Aglash, who talks about, in the relation to digital divides, of the one-way bridge. That is, we bring technology over the bridge to the people who we believe to need it, but nothing actually comes out of that. Um, so there's no idea or use or concept of how to think about participatory design, how to engage those communities to design and build better technologies. And the other is about the Exo laptop being a gadget. I struggle with the idea of the, a technology designed for the developing world will become and has become a gadget in the, the places like the United States. Myself, I didn't purchase it as a secondary laptop or uh, an important technological device. I purchased it as a gadget, um, as a fun toy to play with and, and um, think about new ways of interacting with technology in our society. So in closing, I think it's really interesting that the one laptop or child, even though it has potentially wonderful ramifications for rethinking how we interact um, globally with technology, but at the same time, it's a double-edged sword potentially that will further marginalize other parts of the world by designing and building and distributing technologies that may not um, serve and serve their needs.